I get to review a lot of GPS watches on this channel, but over the past six months, the watch that I've probably been wearing the most is this, the Garmin Forerunner 955. And I don't think that that means it's the best GPS watch on the market or anything crazy like that, but I found that when I was wearing and testing other watches, there were just these little things that I missed about this 955. So in this video, we're gonna talk about all of those details. We'll talk about everything else that I think that you might wanna know if you are considering the Garmin Forerunner 955 for yourself. And I get it, if you are short on time and you just want my super hot quick take on the 955, uh, I think it's a fantastic watch. And I think it's a very good option for you. I don't think you'll be disappointed if you do end up picking one up. Uh, only issue is that there are a few other fantastic watches on the market to consider, uh, but that's stuff that I'll definitely talk about within this video. Over the past six months, I've primarily been lap swimming, open water swimming, road cycling, mountain biking, uh, trail running, uh, maybe a little bit of road running with this 955. And those are just the things that I like to do. Not that the 955 can't do a ton of other things. So for you guys, if you're into skiing or rowing or yoga or weights, this watch can track all of those things. It's just stuff that I don't have an abundance of experience with. So keep that in mind as we go through this review. But the basics about the Garmin Forerunner 955 is that it's a 1.3 inch transflective display, meaning that it's easily visible outside in direct sunlight. But inside, I would say it's you know not quite as bright as something like an AMOLED display, something like your Apple Watch if you're used to that. Uh, but the 955 watch lens is made of Gorilla Glass, so it's scratch resistant, but it's definitely not scratch proof. And the 955 now has a touchscreen, but what's nice is that you can use buttons to do just about everything that you can do with the touchscreen. And I actually find that, you know, I'd say nine times out of 10, I'm using those buttons to operate this watch. And when I have used the touchscreen in wet and rainy conditions, it has worked pretty well for me. Uh, again, I just tend to prefer the buttons. But the 955 comes in a white and a black color. It costs $500 or $600 if you end up buying the 955 with solar. And the watch that I'll be showing kind of throughout this video is the white non-solar edition. And I'm seeing about two weeks of battery life with this 955. I do tend to get about an hour of GPS intensive usage from the watch per day. I'm mostly, you know, swimming, biking, and running. Uh, I think with the solar edition, you know, depending on the sunny conditions that you might see, you might get an entire extra week out of that particular watch. And I think that I would only consider that solar option if I lived in a fairly sunny environment. I live in the Pacific Northwest. This time of year, it's always pretty like rainy or cloudy or dark. Uh, but this new GPS chip that they have in the 955, it really is efficient. You can get over 40 hours of battery life when using GPS in its normal tracking mode. But there are a few different GPS tracking modes with this watch. The watch has something called multi-band GPS, meaning that it can connect to multiple GPS satellite systems to increase accuracy. And you can switch between all of these different GPS modes in the settings of each activity type. But Garmin also recently released this new auto select mode where if your GPS signal is starting to get weak, it'll actually switch over to use that more battery intensive multiband GPS mode. And personally, you know, that's the mode that I'm going to be leaving my watch in. And I don't know exactly what your situation is, but that's probably what I would recommend for you to try as well. And I don't think it's necessarily the multiband GPS chip that's causing these extremely accurate GPS plots. My theory is that, you know, it has something more to do with how Garmin is designing their antennas on these watches recently, or maybe they have some sort of other secret sauce that they're putting in here. Uh, but I actually have loads of GPS data, tons of plot points of me running and biking with this 955, comparing it to other watches. Uh, the big takeaway I would say is that this watch is producing extremely accurate GPS data. However, when I started using the Garmin Forerunner 955, 
I would say it was really, really struggling when it came to open water swimming. It kept telling me that my distances were really short, and that was actually due to a bug calculating the distance of the GPS track. And I know this is gonna sound crazy, uh, but the GPS plots and the tracking that wasn't to blame at all. The GPS plots were actually excellent, but somehow the watch was actually taking those plot points and calculating the distance incorrectly. So to test this, you could take your GPS data and plug it into any sort of different software and it would give you the correct distance. But, you know, as of the recording of this video, that bug should have been corrected. I just haven't been able to confirm this because it's January here and lake temperatures are probably hovering around 35 degrees or so. Uh, maybe it's because I'm a wimp, but uh, I think it's probably fixed at this point, but I'll get back to you guys when I get in the water. Now, while we're talking about swimming, I'll just say that I've done a ton of lap swimming with this particular watch. And there's nothing super special about the 955 when you compare it to other Garmin watches, but I really do prefer Garmin's lap swimming activity to you know most of the other brands out there, just because it'll provide you with things like drill modes, so that if you are doing a kick set or a drill set, you can just punch in that particular distance. Most manufacturers just kind of skip that part, and then you're kind of left with a, a shorter distance reported than you actually swam. Okay, so if the swim stuff is basically the same, what's the difference between the 955 here? Well, you know, actually a fair amount. Uh, I mentioned that there's a new touchscreen here, and I also mentioned the new GPS multi-track mode, but Garmin also has something new in here in the 955 called HRV status or heart rate variability. It's a little counterintuitive, but when you're well rested, your heart rate is more variable. And when you're recovering from a big hard workout or something like that, your heart rate beats more regularly. So tracking that for a little while will establish a baseline. It takes about three weeks and I'm always switching watches, so it's a little awkward for me. Uh, but checking it when you actually wake up is a good way to see if your body is rested or in a good place to do those harder workouts. But this particular watch takes your HRV, your sleep, your previous workouts, and your stress all into account and it'll give you something called your training readiness score. And it's a score between zero and 100. And there's a ton of other little features that I like about the 955. For example, they have this little hot key feature where you can set a button or holding a button or a combination of buttons to do something custom. I have one set up to take screenshots for my watch and one that goes to a backlight place where I can set the backlight details. Uh, but you can actually set that to go to change sport if you're doing triathlon style workouts or or have it go to a flashlight, which is just kind of a white screen on the device. Maybe that'll help you find your shoes for an early morning run or something like that. Uh, or you can set it to go to some sort of quick link to an alarm clock, which I think would be useful. But keep in mind that Garmin does have their quick menu system. When you hold that backlight button, it kind of pulls up that quick menu. And that quick menu is editable, so you can kind of do some of this stuff through that. I use that quick menu to get to the stopwatch functionality a lot when I'm like, coaching runners on the track. But since this is a review of this watch after six months, I figure we should talk about durability. And the watch body itself is made of plastic, but there's not a lot of noticeable wear on it yet. Uh, I haven't even really noticed, you know, those few marks that you typically see on plastic watches once they've been worn and scratched up a bit. I haven't seen any of that yet. And I don't see any sort of problems or scratches with the Corning Gorilla Glass, the touchscreen here. It actually looks really good to me. And I've actually been using this watch without any sort of screen protector. Again, another spot where you'll often see cracks or damages to these watches is on the back of the watch, the glass cover of the optical heart rate sensor. Again, I don't see any issues here yet. Uh, and those can be critical because they can kind of bother the heart rate sensor and give you some messed up readings. Uh, I don't even see any scratches to the back of the watch face where you'll sometimes drag it across the charger or something like that. So far, so good. And keep in mind that, you know, although I'm calling this the 955 review after six months, I do often wear and test other watches, uh, but I just say that the 955 is probably the watch that I've worn most over that time frame, and it does seem to be holding up really well. So overall, uh, I'd say that durability has been excellent so far with the Forerunner 955. And while this review is, I'd say overwhelmingly positive. Uh, I don't wanna present this watch as if the launch of the Garmin Forerunner 955 has been without issue. Uh, I did some testing at one point showing some very odd battery draining issues while swimming. Uh, there was also a weird touchscreen lagginess that was reported uh, before doing like a hard reboot. There's also been issues with metrics like cadence. 
I'd say, you know, like all watches at launch, Garmin seems to kind of struggled a bit and then kind of worked through the majority of these bugs and issues. I would say as of about September, October timeframe, you know, I really haven't been running into many issues or bugs with this watch. And I've also been very impressed when it comes to the heart rate accuracy of the 955. If you compare it to something like an EKG style chest strap, I'm actually seeing very good optical heart rate data. And it does take a little bit of time to lock onto the signal, but then, you know, after that, it's pretty solid. And, you know, just as a quick side note, I just noticed very recently in the news that Garmin's ECG app has been approved by the FDA, meaning that they could have an app on their watch where you, uh, again, have your watch on your wrist and you have two fingers on buttons, perhaps. I don't know exactly how it's gonna work. And it'll look at your heart rate, monitor that, and kind of diagnose some small issues like, um, like an AFib type of an issue. Uh, not gonna detect heart attacks or anything like that. It's something that Apple has had for a while, but I'll be excited to see it on Garmin watches fairly soon. But the optical heart rate monitor that Garmin has on the back of their watches, they call it their Elevate optical heart rate monitor. I think this is the Elevate 4.0, but it has a blood oxygen saturation sensor built into it. Garmin calls it their pulse ox sensor. Everything has to have a fun name, I guess. Uh, but the last time that I checked mine, it actually said that my blood oxygen saturation is at 92%. That's probably not correct. I'm basically at sea level now. And you know, as far as I know, I don't have pneumonia or anything like that. Uh, but I wouldn't take those, you know, SpO2 readings too literally. It might be something worth monitoring if you are traveling to altitude for a bit. Uh, and you can set it to, you know, be checking all day or at night or on demand. And in the past, I've noticed that it does take a little bit of a toll on the battery life. So I tend to leave mine set to on demand. Okay, in a lot of ways, this is a boring review because, you know, other than that open water swimming issue, you know, a few bugs as they launched this particular device, the 955 has just been a phenomenal GPS watch. There's not a lot wrong with it, and they've actually lowered the price. The 945 was a $600 watch, and the 955 is 500 or 600 as a solar option. And I have the non-solar version here, and you know I don't regret that at all. Uh, I am super happy with the way that Garmin has priced this device, especially considering inflation and all the crazy stuff that's going on these days, but there is a reason to consider skipping the 955. And that's the fact that there are some fantastic other options to consider. I would say that the Apple Watch is a smarter smartwatch if you need more compatibility with applications and things like that. For example, I can like close my garage with my smartwatch. Uh, but frankly, Apple Watches are not gonna be as good of an endurance GPS watch compared to something like this one from Garmin. But, uh, the Apple Watches do have fairly decent accuracy when it comes to heart rate and GPS. And then I would say right from within Garmin itself, I've been very, very impressed with the Garmin Forerunner 255. It actually came out the same time as the Garmin 955. And I did do a six month review of that watch. I'll link it up here somewhere. But it's very similar to the 955 and it's in an amazing value at only $350. In the 255, it doesn't have a touch screen and it doesn't have maps. And you know, to be honest, you know, I mostly use buttons on these watches and I typically don't need maps unless I'm running or biking in an unfamiliar location. And so I think that 255 is a very compelling option in comparison to the 955 here. But those are just some of my quick feelings about the Garmin Forerunner 955 after having used it for six months. And I'd much prefer to hear what you guys have to say, especially if you have any experience with the Garmin Forerunner 955. Drop down in the comments section and we can continue the conversation down there. I love to hear your guys' feedback and I love to hear what you guys have to say about all of these watches. But either way, make sure that you're getting out there swimming, biking, running, rinsing, and repeating it all over again. And we will see you guys on the next one.